Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Woki and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single piece of media out there for Shonen Jump that is available to us in English. We plan to do this until our uh, eyes are gone and we can no longer even uh, read anime because none of us know Japanese, so that's basically it. I mean, I can watch the dub, but it takes a while. And some of these older series don't have dubs. Or good doves, I should say. But we plan to do this until the end of time. The current series we go through is obviously Jujutsu Kaisen. With um, Gintama as the main big one. The one that has been uh, going through since the very, very beginning of the show. And the one we're talking about now, which has not been talked about in months. Kuroko's Basketball! Even though I watched these episodes months ago. <laughs> <laughs> It was such a crazy long time ago. You can always keep track of when I'm watching these because I talk about them on my Twitter while I'm watching it. And this happened maybe legit, maybe four months ago, maybe close to it. Yeah, it's it's been a minute. Yeah, very busy with work. A lot of things on fire uh, in the movie industry at the moment as we wait for companies to be like, yo, should we pay these people fair? Let's lose $200 million first and then think about it. <laughs> we'll think about it after, yeah. Yeah. You know what? We've decided after losing a fuck ton of money and causing a lot of issues, we're ready to talk. <laughs> so hopefully things get better on my side. But that also means that I finally have less work now because there's not a lot of work going around. So we can finally talk about these Kuroko's basketball episodes. Let's go. Are you ready, Zen? I am ready. All right. Let's talk about episode 20. I don't want to be. Go ahead, Zen. So episode 20, we have the return of Tepe Kyoshi, uh, who is there to kind of return to the team. He, he's an old player who was injured. He's back now. Wait a minute. Uh, he, uh, My bad. Episode 16 through 20. 16. Through okay. 20. My bad. Uh, My bad. He was like, wait a minute. I remember this episode, but this is the last episode. My bad, episode 16 for 20. You can see that it's been a bit. <laughs> where I was like, oh, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's these episodes. No, my bad. Because the last five episodes are the end of season one. I was jumping the gun. It is episode 16. Let's go. Uh, let's go is the game continues with Almine's team. It's uh, To'o. And, you know, the... the the game plan for our boys was that oh we'll we'll get such a big lead early that when Amine returns he'll just he won't be able to catch up right like he won't be able to to make the difference uh, does not work because To ends up taking the lead um they're kind of losing to a combination of just like solid play and uh, Momoi who knows like all of their skills and abilities and stuff uh, but. Kagami and Kuroko kind of team up and they manage to get some points going but after the first quarter uh, they're still down. To'o is still winning. Uh, Kagami is hurt and he is struggling a little bit. Um, eventually they kind of pull him off and they have this nice little talk where the coach is like, I don't have a choice. I, I have to. Um, sorry. And he's like, I, I'm the best. <laughs> like, uh, don't be. Like, we have to win this game. Um, Kagame, Kama Kagami goes in to re-enter. They're in the second quarter, and they're down by a little bit. Uh, and then the chapter, or I, I guess the chapter, the episode ends with uh, Aomine finally arriving for the second half of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's my current thoughts about this episode. I remember thinking that this is actually a very, uh, good start to this one, because it shows that even though Almine is extremely strong and he's just that crazy good that he can just show up whenever the hell he wants and still win the game, that doesn't mean that the other dudes on the team are bad, it just means that they're not on his level. <laughs> And they really show it here by just quickly cutting down the plants that they had. And they're like, nah, <laughs> we would get so badly scolded if we even didn't put up some kind of fight against you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. It's a very cool way of just showing how stacked against the odds are. And especially going into it, you were thinking like, oh, you know, maybe they had a shot if he's not there. And then his team is very quickly like, no, 
no, it ain't going to be playing like that. It already feels like a borderline unwinnable situation from the moment they revealed, actually, we're good. <laughs> actually, we're insane at the game, too. And, yeah, I remember that a lot of this... A lot of these episodes ends up. A lot of my thoughts on these episodes kind of blend together because it is all for one arc. It's like one long basketball game, but I'll try and remember to give uh, my thoughts about uh, what I was feeling when I see it. But in general, I really like the setup for this one and where it's going, and also like how it feels like there. Right when it felt like, hey, like maybe we can maybe do this. That's when Omine shows up, and it's like, hey, I'm here, and all the plans go out the window. And that's pretty cool. I really like the way they've been setting him up. I really think he's a, a good villain to show off of right right now. Uh, what do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it's cool. I, I really like Amine. And I like how they're they're like, uh, alright, we're gonna get our main guy back out there. We're gonna turn the tides. And he just shows up and is like, I'm here. You're fucked. Like <laughs> the immediate vibe is like, oh shit, <laughs> this guy is here. Yeah, the vibes are just so. There's such bad vibes going on for the entire team. It feels like every uh-huh. bad thing that could happen does happen, and the other team is just like, this is just another day for us. We're not like playing any harder. We're just playing. <laughs> this is a very normal day for us, and it ends up creating a very cool dynamic where one team is fighting for their lives. And the other one is just, like, <laughs> you know, living. Being normal. That's it. Yeah, very cool. Let's go on and continue the game in episode 17, Zen. You're all ridiculous. Uh, hang on a second. My, all, my like, whole web browser is, like, crashing. Oh, my God. Not they can't great. handle Kuroko. They said, holy I shit, can't. Omine. Too powerful. Too uh, powerful to game of basketball. This is. This, so this is episode 17. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm, You're I'm all ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so Aomine and Kagami are kind of like, they're the aces. So they're clashing with one another, kind of like at a standoff. Um, Kuroko wants to play because he's like, I want to, he wants to prove himself to Aomine. Because like back in middle school, Aomine was the, the Kagame, the, the, the Kagami to this Kuroko. Uh, in middle school, and he wants to he wants to go in and beat him, and like, because you know Kuroko's whole motivation is like I want to teach my old friends that the game is fun. Um, they end up going in. Um, they pull Kuroko out because he's a little a little exhausted boy, and uh, Amine comes back in. And he's like, all right, all right, I'm good now. I'll score all the shots I need to score for the whole game in the third quarter, and then I'll sit out the end of the game. Um, I mean, he starts playing like uh, super crazy, like fast, frantic pace, and there's a really funny uh, scene where Kagami says like English, Japanese, and he's like, "Street ball, <laughs> <laughs> street a basket." It's street really basket. funny. Street a basket, because uh, yeah, he plays he plays street ball techniques because he played his whole life growing up before he got into like formal play, and uh, he starts just absolutely shit stomping them. Mm. yeah and then that's where this episode ends I'll say for the most part this does a very good job of just showing them get completely overwhelmed but at the same time they're not like giving up which has been a pretty big thing when it comes to Almine is that whenever he said like hey whenever I put in like any form of anything fighting against anyone they just give up and they don't just don't want to play the game anymore. So I really feel like this game is more of a like mental fortitude battle. At this point in the game, I'm like, they're losing. But now this is goes beyond a game of basketball. Now it becomes a battle of wills of, is this game enough? Are they going to lose so badly that they actually just give up on basketball itself? Which is the thing that Almine says happens. Is that I go a little bit too hard. I play the way I want to play. And it turns out no one's on my level. And they stop playing the game and they don't want to play the game anymore. So even though he isn't, even though that is not his intention, because I really do feel like um, when they showed him in the past and they showed him like ruining basketball for people, it was always unintentional. He doesn't want to do it. It's just that that's the way it is because that's how he plays the game. So I think it's actually kind of interesting to kind of show him doing that stuff specifically, <laughs> like attacking them where it hurts the most, the heart. 
and they're still kind of just going like, you know what? Bench Kuroko for now. We're going to try and win without him, and then maybe we can win in the later half with him. <laughs> it's a plan. <laughs> it's a plan that we got. We still, you know, we're not out. It's still good. It's still good. It's, it's like Homer with the, the with the with the pig when it's up in the air. He's like, it's still good. It's still good. And then it hits hit into the sewer. He's like, it's not good anymore, Dad. <laughs> it's so over. <laughs> it's so over. But yeah, again, a really good. The game continues to be good. How do you feel about uh, that, Zen? Uh, the game does indeed continue to be good. It's so fucking good. Uh, yeah, so I absolutely good. love this whole game. Everything Amini does is awesome, but his initial appearance and just like, because you know they they beat Kisei and Wigurima, so you kind of get the vibe of like, oh, they're keeping up, you know, they can fight these guys, and then Amini just fucking obliterates these dudes. Yeah, it's it's like when you get kind of cocky and you think like, oh, I've beaten two uh, Monster Hunter dudes, you know, they're pretty big. I think I can handle some of these later dudes, and then they show up and they just completely fucking destroy you. And you're like, God damn, okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like here. So, and I cannot stress enough how much where it's like, oh yeah, I don't really have super amounts to say. But the reason is, is because while I'm watching this, I'm just so into like, like yeah, let's kind of just keep the basketball going. Come on, guy. It definitely has that feeling of like, especially when it's like a full on court game like this. You're kind of just getting into it and going like, yeah, come on, go, 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 go. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. So I try and keep a jot down quick notes of like how I'm feeling in that specific moment in time, like a real basketball game. Uh, before we get into the next episode, uh, live reaction Zen. Jump Assemble, the new 5-on-5 multiplayer MOBA featuring Goku, Luffy, Naruto, the dude from... I saw that. It's like, it's like Luffy, Naruto, uh, Goku, Ichigo, Tanjiro, <laughs> Yuji, Mashal, and fucking Andy <laughs> from Undead Unlock. What a, what a, what a weird... What a fucking roster. <laughs> yeah. Also, I like how it says Jump genuine authorized because <laughs> most of these shitty knockoff games are not they're not they're not at yeah. all uh that's hilarious we have to figure out a way to play. even though it's a mobile game i actually i actually end up preferring mobile mobas now that i think about it i was really a big fan yeah of if those. i had to pick to where to play a moba i would do it on yeah, a mobile we'll, device, not a fucking screen we'll do this one later we can do a heart i want to see <laughs> i want to see the jungle goku I want to see. I want to see what the fuck. How they translate any of these characters to any of the roles? Like, because currently, what I'm looking at right here, who the fuck is the support? Tanjiro, just because he's supportive as a person. Yeah. I, well, there's other characters that aren't that aren't just these guys in it. Like, I know like Megami is in it, and he's got the twin shadows and stuff. His um, ult just kills himself. <laughs> the second yeah, he's, all, he's just summons Maharaga and kills. Himself. Did you know there's a Minecraft mod for Jujutsu Kaisen characters? Really. No, I had no and, idea. Yeah, and it gets it gets funnier. Um, they they like fight and like you can fight them, uh, and mm -hmm. they all have their curse techniques and stuff. And Megami's is as soon as he starts losing, he just drops Maharaga. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I would That's love really it. Funny. I I need to see it in mobile form. <laughs> Imagine trying the jungle and you get a little bit of pressure in a fucking cup. <laughs> The Megami immediately hits the ult. <laughs> he hits the Maharaga button. The I'm taking you with me button. I'm taking you with me. What the fuck, dude? It's not that serious. I was just trying to put in some pressure. Nah, it's serious to me, my guy. I need to protect my lane <laughs> by any means necessary. That's hilarious. Hopefully, when that comes out in 2024, we'll figure out a way to do it. They should add in some Kuroko's Kid Basketball guys, but I'll mediate the game. They should. Why not? One hundred percent. No, I'm being serious. They, I'm pretty sure he's not Almine, but I'm pretty sure Kuroko's in the DS game, isn't he? Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. As like a someone will. I mean, there's so many cool things to do it, and may as well. It's a MOBA. It's perfectly fine. Goku can get hit by street ball and lose. Like obviously, everyone can agree that basket that in any any fight, Goku can win. But I don't think Goku can win in a basketball game because he doesn't know the rules. So therefore, he's at a disadvantage. It could easily get tripped up by all the rules. Easy. Let's go on, Zen. Let's talk about episode 19. On to a new challenge.
Is our, did we skip an episode? Oh, we did. Episode 18. No! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> Amine uh, just keeps beating the shit out of everybody. Um, Siren is doing their best to come back, and Kuroko uh, hits him with this like super anime pass. It's like the fucking insane camera angle anime pass where he does his ignite pass Kai, which is like the super version. Um... And I mean, it catches it, and he's like, "You fucking suck, still. Like, you haven't improved at all. Why are you like awful? It's pretty. It's pretty funny that you haven't even tried to get better since we were in middle school together." Um, and that kind of like breaks Kuroko's spirit a little bit. It seems um, they end up losing. Like, they're down by like thirty or like thirty or thirty-five points. They're down by like a shitload of points. Uh, and then eventually, Kuroko reveals that while he was he was discouraged, he's still determined. Like, he, he he's still in there. And so they're all like, yes, we're going to go out there and we're going to do this. Uh, they end up having to bench Kagami because he was playing like gingerly on one leg, which ends up really overtaxing and hurting his other leg because he's making it double the work, basically. Um, but it, it just doesn't matter without Kagami in there. They have no chance and they lose by like a gargant. It's like 70 points they end up losing by. Just an absurd amount of points. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no, I, I can't remember if it's uh, this one or the other one. Um, I think someone ends up talking to Amina. I think it might be in this one because it's in between the, as they're going to the locker room. And they're basically saying like, hey man, why weren't you here at the beginning? And you know, it's Koriko and stuff like that. And then his response is like, uh, you're right. I actually did mess up. I should have been here from the beginning. And they're like, wait, what? And it's a definite moment of like, that's him realizing that even through all this and even through they really hammer it home in this episode. Um... They're losing, but they still haven't really given up, and they're still trying. And for Almine to even get to that point is still yeah, very that's like impressive. a big deal for him. Yeah. Yes, that's enough for him to be like, you know what? I should have been here for the entire time because I feel like now, not to say that they're on my level, but they're not giving up, and I haven't had that in a very long time. So you definitely feel, even though he's not saying that, you can definitely feel it in the way he's like, no. I should have been here from the start. That also makes me feel like if they ever do a uh, rematch, he will be there from the start. <laughs> or at least try to be there. And set so uh, something up like that. I really like the part where Kuroko tries to do his like crazy, super high-detailed pass and just gets stopped. Which is really funny because um, when, the, when he was originally talking about the pass, he actually says like this is a pass that was supposed to only be really caught by Omine. And because he was able to work with... Um, because he was able to like work with someone new, he was they were able to kind of get the pass down. But it is really funny when he tried the pass and the person who who, who he did the pass with originally was just like, "Nah, I don't know what you think you're trying to do here, my guy." Yeah, this it is it's a such a good scene. It is. It's very good, and it's a complete shutdown. Um, I think it's either on this episode or the previous one. Um, when they're in the locker room and again it's a really good showing of how like one side is like taking this as a heavy like oh boy this is tough and the other one is like it's a normal day and on mm -hmm. Amine's team they're arguing about lemons and eating lemons and eating a very specific specific kind of like lemon and they're like going, hey pass me that lemon whatever I got here is like don't just take other people's lemons like that and this is the first time I've ever learned that you can actually eat lemons with the skin on it I was like I didn't know people just ate lemons like this that's I, crazy yeah I, I don't yeah I, I don't think that the honey lemons are a real thing you don't uh, think so no well i okay never mind apparently they are i just looked up i looked off the internet and they are and that's apparently how they're made they're they're just cut like that and soaked in lemons really that's cr mm. yeah it did look kind of good <laughs> if i'm being 100 real with you yeah i don't know the, the rind's still on it too yeah so you eat the rind and all that's great. Apparently. I'm, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to see if I can convince my sister to make some. <laughs> make some for me. Listen, I know you've never tried anything. This could potentially be dangerous to me, but I need to try it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess. I, I mean, I'm sure it's not, like, bad for you to eat it, but I don't know why you would eat it. Yeah, it's definitely one of those cases. But anyway, and then they cut to Kuroko's team, and then they show his their version of it. And it's, like, been, been cooked by... Um, the manager, so it's been done shittily. <laughs> it's, it's like terribly, yeah. It's fucking awful. Oh, it's awful, and it's so funny. Everyone's just like down and feeling sad about the current state of the game. They're playing bad. They can't even have the good lemons. <laughs> Their life is terrible. <laughs> really funny, but yeah, I really liked um, a lot of this game. I like seeing like both Kagami and Kuroko kind of be taken 
to their absolute limits. Um, uh, Kagami is obviously trying to play when he's still injured. But even if he wasn't injured and he was at 100%, he would likely still have been losing. That seems like pretty clear to me. It was like not they were not using the injured leg as an excuse. They were just saying you can't keep playing the game because at the rate that you're playing right now and still like on a bum leg, you're just gonna actually not be able to play the game anymore. <laughs> you need to stop. And Kuroko is taken down mentally. Like it doesn't matter if he gets taken down like um, physically because he knows he's not. That's not his strong point. It's the point where you actually attack him where he's the strongest at at the moment. That's the part where you actually start to like shake him in his shoes and stuff. So that was very cool, and I like the ending bit where they talk about like, yeah, they lost terribly, but nobody cried that day. They just knew that they had lost, and that was it. And they fall, and they always thought it was like a. And they also show the the up, up on the screen. It's like a hundred and twelve to fifty five, and it's like, damn. That's an insane ass whooping that they just took. <laughs> but yeah. Really good episode. Really good like arc to just really put them not put them in their place, but just kind of like put them in a way that goes like you are not you're you, you've got a lot of good wins on you, but you are still not at the actual top level, which is where Amine is and stuff like that. And in general just putting a little bit more respect to the Generation of Miracles names after two of their members losing their games. So, really good. How do you feel about Zen? Super good. This is their first loss, and it's, like, a huge loss. Um, it fucks so hard, dude. Though, though, you feel bad for him, because, like, you, you know, you kind of you get used to riding the high of, like, the comeback, you know? Because yeah. they always come back and, and win by just the skin of their teeth. And they get fucking obliterated. Uh, and it feels good. Like, it well, doesn't feel good, but, like, it, it it's a cool twist. Because, you know, you get kind of tired when the main guys win every time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it was so cool to watch them get just obliterated. Uh, and the other thing that's very interesting is that I also like that they mentioned specifically the crying part, is that actually in a lot of sports mangas, when the team loses for the first time, it actually emotionally devastates them. <laughs> yeah, because there's just, you know, it's the first time they get, like, a check to their skill to make them realize that oh you know we were on a roll but maybe we're not hot shit yeah exactly so they they do end up crying a lot of the time when they lose but in this case there was nothing in that i think actually famously slam dunk <laughs> one of the most known basketball uh, mangas out there for that is the reason that japan loves uh basketball yeah, one of it is the most it, known basketball it is the manga. most my bad let me <laughs> better put respect on it um during the first game that the main character actually loses in, he actually does do. It's like the first time he ever shows any form of emotion. And actually, I think caring for the game is that he actually breaks down. And the and it's actually his fault. And he feels that it's his fault. And his like team captain actually has to like put his hand, his, uh, <laughs> which funny enough, it's that the, the, the clip from Or Collection from Slam Dunk. Remember the one where he puts his, like his hand on his head and goes like, it's going to be okay. That's him trying to comfort him, knowing that like he the, like the game was in a very emotional high. Emotions are high for everyone here. They're trying to win, and then he's the reason that they lose, and he's just like devastated by it. So I think it was actually that's rad. Yeah, really cool. It's a really cool subversion on one of the on a scene that is from one of the most popular basketball mangas in Japan in general. So very cool way of approaching it, and very well done. And let's talk about, let's pick up the pieces then as we talk about the next episode. On to a new challenge, episode 19. Go ahead, Zen. So, on a new challenge, uh, there is, the, we're in like with the To'o people, and they're like, ah, that, that Kuroko loser, and I mean, he's like, why don't you shut the fuck up? Like, you're, you're worthless, and he's out there playing the game. Don't you ever fucking say that shit around me again. <laughs> uh, it's such a good scene. Um,. Because he was, like, giving Kuroko shit and being like, that's what passes for a starter on their team. And, I mean, he was like, you ain't doing shit out here. Why don't you shut bench your mouth? <laughs> yeah, shut your mouth, bench warmer. Just absolutely ripping him apart. Um, Kagame, Kagame is like, you know what? We we need to stop working together because we uh, it, it's holding me back. Like, he's, he's turning into, he's being a dick, basically. Um, and then Kuroko has, like, a, like a, what do you call it? Uh, when you start sucking at sports, like a slump. Uh, it's Downward like a word. spiral. No, it's it's like a it's a word. It's like a Until... silly word. The yips. He gets the yips. He gets the um, yips. He gets the yips. He's like, 
I, he's like, it's like it's like a word where you start sucking at sports all of a sudden. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, he gets the yips, and he he's kind of starts fucking up, uh, and they they end up losing, and then that gets them out of the tournament. Like they don't ever really bounce back from how bad they get their asses stomped out by by Amine. Um, so their only chance to get to the 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 final, like the regionals or whatever, is the Winter Cup, and so. Um, we kind of time skip ahead a little bit. Kagami's back. Uh, he's healed up. No more injuries. But also, he's not uh, like him, his old self. He's very much like, all right, yeah, uh, I, I'm the best. Like, I'm going to carry this team. Kind of like how Amine did. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's you know, kind of reverting a little bit. Um, him and Kuroko don't seem to be hanging out too much anymore. Everyone's just kind of shitty, right? Every, it's just bad. The vibes are atrocious, and everyone notices it. Terrible, terrible uh, and then Kiyoshi Tepe returns. He is the founder of the team, the ace prior to Kagami, who had been out up to this point because um, he had been injured. He was in the hospital. Um, he kind of he kind of cheers everyone up a little bit, and then he tells Kagami that he wants to play a game to see who uh, is going to be the the ace of the. The, the team who's gonna like be the leader not the leader but like the the ace player of the team even though he's wearing like uh he's not wearing like good shoes or anything for this he's just like let's let's do it right now yeah let's just play some basketball let's go and yeah this is uh, another very good episode for me it's really um <laughs> that that moment where Amine just basically talks down that dude who tries to talk down Kuroko is amazing. It still shows that even though he was talking shit himself, he earned the right to talk that shit. Mm -hmm. It's different. Yeah, when I it's do such it. a good scene. Yeah, it is really good, and it's a really good way of saying like I really like it when other people are put in their place over being like, no, you just don't understand how fucking good this guy is, and just because I made it look easy, you couldn't wipe <laughs> his ass. I don't know what the fuck you're thinking. A uh, random bench warmer that doesn't have a name here, but you, you need to shut the fuck up right now. It's really good. Um, I really like the slump that Kuroko kind of goes into right afterwards, where he's just, like, trying. And he just, like, isn't able to do anything. He can't pass. That's literally the only thing he's currently good for, is passing. And he just can't pass. And Siren is kicked out, and now they have to basically pick up the pieces uh, things are off to a weird start because you can tell that the loss was tremendous. So you can definitely feel like, man, I don't know what we're going to do here. But then they t then they start talking about the player who's going to be returning. And I think I, f I don't remember what team is saying it, but they're basically saying like, oh, yeah, when we beat them last year, if he was there, we would not have won. And I think it was the. I don't remember which team it was, but they were definitely like, yeah, remember how we beat them so badly last year? It's like, yeah, that wouldn't have happened if he was there, but he wasn't there because he was injured, I think, is what well, what it was. So I thought it was a very good way of like showing this guy up. And then when he actually does show up, he's like a goofball. <laughs> he's a... Uh... Yeah, he's like... Uh... Everyone, yeah, he, uh, you get the thought that he's going to be like, oh, the, the big time ace, and he's just like a silly guy. He's just yeah. a good dude. He kind of breaks up the funk everyone's in because everyone else is like, you know, like, man, so depressed. It's like they just, <laughs> it's like someone died, but what died was their basketball, <laughs> their ability to play basketball in a tournament. But then he definitely comes in and is like immediately shoots up um, the feelings. The vibes get better when he's in there. And yeah, it, it ends with him kind of challenging um uh, Kagami, and it's very like, oh, how's it gonna go? I kind of want to see where this guy's going because if they really say he's that strong, this team that was able to just beat him so easily the last time, he would have been able to stop it. It's very interesting to see how strong he actually is. And how do you feel about Zen? Uh, super good. Yeah, I really like uh, Tepe. Uh, Kiyoshi is one of my favorite characters. Uh, I'm, it, it's good when he comes back in too because. He's kind of just the guy you need, like, in this situation, right? Where everyone's, like, the vibes are shit. Everyone's pissed. It's all going to shit. You kind of need the guy who's, like, chill guy. Like, it brings, it, brings it down a little, you know? Yeah. It's, he's awesome. I really like that guy. Yeah, he seems really cool from the first two episodes that I've had with him so far. He definitely brings something to the team. He also feels like one of the very few uh, people who are from the old previous team that don't seem completely, like... 
uh middle of the road i think is the nice way of saying it like whenever they do like the introduction is like and here's the people from the previous team they're okay (laughs) or how amazing are they at the game well outside of like the main um actual like leader of the team and the dude who can like has eagle eye vision the other ones are always just like he's a player he sometimes makes the shots that he shoots so it's kind of nice to see someone from the older team actually get some proper respect and be like, no, th- this guy's legit. He's 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 good. He's good. And we're going to see how good in this episode. Episode 20, finally, the legit one. I don't want to be. Go ahead, Zen. Are we sure that's the right one, too? Yes, episode 20. The, oh, um, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, I, I had... Suddenly, now I skipped an episode. Okay, <laughs> you're yeah. about to go to episode twenty-one. Completely I was skipped. about to go to twenty-one and just start talking. Yeah, so uh, they they are playing um, and they're doing pretty well, and it kind of pisses Kagami off because Kiyoshi's like not dressed for the occasion at all, and he's like fuck it. But he does that. Kagami does end up winning. Um, they end up doing some practice matches and uh, to like play against one another to get put on a special training regimens for each of them. Um. Kagami is like I don't I don't want to I don't want to play with you anymore, Kuroko. I'm having I'm having angst. Um, and Kagami ends up carrying the the game for the first years. Um, and Kiyoshi says that the reason he wanted to do that is he's trying to get Kuroko to realize that the the role he's chosen for himself limits what he can do. Right? He's he's basically intentionally hurting him. So he kind of gives a breakdown of like. Basketball is not really like other sports where, like, there's not re- – specialists don't really exist, right? Like, mm-hmm. you have to be good at several aspects of the game. You can, Like, a passing specialist doesn't really exist. Um, and then Kuroko kind of comes to the realization that Kagami isn't really intentionally trying to hurt his feelings, but he, he thinks that he- Kuroko isn't holding him back in the way that he thought. He didn't think, like, oh, you suck. You're holding me back. It's more that, like – I'm so dependent on you that it's holding me back, that I'm not growing because I'm so reliant on what you do for me. Um, and so they kind of agree, like they have a, a moment where they sort of like, everyone says they're going to get better and, and work together better and figure it all out. Mm-hmm. It's good. Shit's good. good. Good stuff. Really nice stuff. And yeah, there was a, I, you know, I was really feeling down, not seeing Kagami and Kuroko hanging out and being buddies, not doing their usual shtick together. It did feel weird. It did feel like, damn, I need this friendship to survive. (laughs) I need them to get back together and for things to be cool again. Please go back to being cool. And then thankfully they do kind of like, Kagami is able to actually explain himself as opposed to just being like, you're holding me back. Well, he, let me elaborate that on just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, let me let me work out this. Yeah, let me work out this feeling shit. It's not. It wasn't in America. <laughs> I have to learn it again in Japan. Um, and I really do like that. I do like that Kuroko himself is realizing, like, hey, I can't. I think he, uh, the dude is right. Tepe is right. I can't just be into. Um, passing because he knows that he's very good at passing and that's why he's just like keeping up to it because he's like this is what I know how to do good and I can't do anything else but it's okay because as long as I can do passing I'll be fine and that's just the he's learned very easily that's not the case because what happens yeah when it's not gonna stuff. like yeah when he just got shut down completely by Almine yep yeah, he got shot down completely down by Almine and to be fair I think he's seen a little bit of it in previous games where someone was able to stop his passing but he was able to come through with it and be like oh yeah no i can still figure out a way to do it it wasn't until the complete shutdown where he saw the worst nightmare which is like okay now i'm not serving any purpose because all i have is my passing and if i don't have that then he's literally just a liability on the court because he can't pass because if he can't pass he can't shoot he can't run he can't do anything so he's holding back a lot of his team and he's doing it himself because he's not trying to get better than any of the other ones. And because the idea is that he's already bad. He can't get any better. And even the analysis that other people have seen is like, hey, I've I've read this guy's stat line. I've seen his feats. He can't get any better. He, <laughs> he is going to be basically staying on this level. And 
just hearing people say that is enough for him to be like, no, maybe I can't get any better. But finally, it takes someone coming up and said like, hey, just because someone says you can't get better doesn't mean you have to stop trying <laughs> to be better. <laughs> you can still try and be better and maybe it'll work out a little bit better for you in the end and you can improve yourself that way. So and it was cool to see him kind of come to that realization as Kagami also realizes like, no, I'm also relying on you too much and I need to get better myself. And this is a case of both players going, we're both holding each other back by relying on each other. So we need to break up and then come back when both of us are individually strong so that we're both basically ready to take down whatever we can fucking take. But as long as both of us are kind of like together and keeping each other afloat will never improve because the other one's weaknesses will always be covered by the other one and that's not a good way to improve so very cool very nice episode very nice realizations and i uh can't wait to see more how do you feel zen uh super good for this is some of the best of kuroko right here is after this first loss and they're all kind of uh try to reevaluate themselves a little bit um a lot of times in sports series, like they'll do this where they'll have the character who's the specialist and then they'll realize that the shit that, that they specialize in just isn't enough. Like Haikyuu does the same thing where the the dude is little and that makes him suck at volleyball because he's small, but uh, he's super quick. So like in the beginning, I don't, I'm sure you've read Haikyuu, right? No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't? Okay. Yeah. So he wants to play volleyball. He's, he's a little shorty. He's real short and you can't really be short to play volleyball, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he's super fucking fast and he can jump really high. So... They do this trick where he uh, he's the only one that can, like, him and the setter that they have, which is, like, the guy that pushes the ball up to be spiked, are, like, they're able to do it really quickly. And they're able to do it so well that the, the guy can close his eyes and spike it because he trusts that the setter will always put the ball there. And he's the only one fast enough to do it. But it's a super, like, one-trick thing. So eventually it gets immediately figured out, and then the guy who that's all he's worth becomes worthless, right? And it's kind of the same thing that happens with Kuroko, where they're like, oh, we can stop your passing. You have no value. Your, your value is completely gone. Um, yeah. But it, it's cool to see it here, because Kuroko's thing isn't so much like, I need to expand my repertoire with, like, um, with jump, you know, I need to, like, figure out how to improve my, like, jumping or my spiking or whatever. It's literally, like, my entire philosophy around my skill set that I thought made me valuable really isn't anymore like i'm not playing middle school kids anymore yeah. um and it's cool to see him kind of realize that like what he does is effective but it's not going to be effective at the level that he needs it to be yeah exactly it's cool it is very cool and yeah funny enough the only <laughs> the only one where uh i realized that because the other two sports uh, mangas i have read uh, one of them is Ice Shield 21 and football is a very different game that actually does have people who specialize in stuff <laughs> So in that one, Ice Shield 21 is okay with just being super fast because that's all you need to be from the dude who, I think, what, the, what is what did he play? He plays like the runner? Like, actually, what the fuck? Is he he's position? the running back, yeah. Running back? Okay, thank God that you know football. Yeah. He's like, what the fuck is his position? He's, he's the running back, yeah. He's the running back. Okay, there you go. I know the quarterback is uh, Haruma, so it's not, it's not him. <laughs> I know that much. No, no um, he's the running back. But funny enough, in Slam Dunk, they have something very similar to that where um, they keep telling him, like, because in the beginning of Slam... Have you ever read any of the of Slam, Dunk, Slam Dunk, by the way? No. No? Okay. So in the beginning, Slam Dunk starts... If you, if you want to know what the beginning of Slam Dunk is, basically, uh, the dude has zero interest in basketball whatsoever. He actively, I think, hates the game and starts fights with the basketball team. But there is a girl who's super into... Um, basketball and he really wants to impress her and this guy's also super unpopular with girls like <laughs> the he like strikes out to, with three of them in the span of a single day he's like terrible sakuragi's is like terrible when it comes to women but this one girl's like oh you're really tall you could play basketball and he's like holy shit a woman that has not run away from me so he's like let me show you this he's like uh let me show you how to slam dunk and he actually is able to jump insanely high and go for the slam dunk but the problem is is that he has no follow-up afterwards <laughs> he like doesn't know how to play the game so even when he goes for his first slam dunk he hits his head on the board because he's like i actually jumped too high 
and that was a terrible idea. But the thing that they keep trying to drive home for him is that he's like, okay, once he is actually on the team and he wants to impress the girl, he's like, all right, put me in there. I'm going to slam dunk that ball in. And they're like, you you can't do that. You can't just go into every single game and just slam dunk the ball every single time. And his response, <laughs> his response is basically, watch me. <laughs> and for the first <laughs> And he does that for the first couple of chapters, but eventually he gets to the point where it's like he starts to run into the idea the thing everyone else is telling him is like, well, I'm so focused on the slam dunk, I actually don't know any of the fundamentals to the game. And so he starts to get passed by by that, and he starts to go like, okay, after one specific game, after the slam dunking was not enough, he's like, okay, I need you to actually teach me. Like, teach me what the fuck a screen is. Teach me everything that you can so that I don't lose the same way that I did last time. He actually starts to, like, be taught a little bit more. Because they actually start to not use him on the team. He's like, all you do is fucking go for the slam dunk. He's like, the slam dunk is the coolest thing that you can do. (laughs) And you get two points easy and I can do it. He's like, no, you fucking moron. Stop going for the slam dunk. You need to learn how to dribble the ball and (laughs) to do other things. Slam dunk, one of the greatest. But yeah, it's definitely a case of just, like, trying to see, like, hey, I'm really good at this one specific aspect and just being like, nah. You need to know a little bit more if you want to reach just that next level. So, real cool to get to this far. We're almost at the end. That's it for Corco. We finally talked about it, Zen. It's always really nice to actually sit down and talk about Corco. And next uh, five times that we talk about it, hopefully maybe next, we'll see, because we actually plan on talking about One Piece live action next week. So maybe two weeks from now. We can actually end season one and talk about episodes 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. And that will be the end of season one. And I think we only have like one one more season. And then season three is like not a full 25 episode. Actually, no, it is. We have basically 50 episodes from that point on. And then I think the show's over, but there might be ep- there might be movies. For Kuroko? Yeah. There is uh, one movie. It's like a, It's like a sequel movie. It's okay. Super good, by the way. Uh, that that comes all the way at the end. Yeah, it's it's after the final chapter. Okay, that works out then. But yeah, it's either... called Kuroko no Basuke last game. Oh man, this is the final game that Kuroko plays. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, we'll be almost done with season one, and that'll be cool. And we'll head off into season two, and continue on from there. But either way, good to finally talk about Kuroko. These were Kuroko has been really good. I really yeah, have. Kuroko been... is one of those manga that like nobody seems to ever read, and then I finally get someone to do it, and they're like, "Wow, this is like the best thing ever." Yeah, it actually is it's super, so good. It is really annoying because what happens here is that I watch the five episodes for Kuroko, and then I want to continue watching Kuroko, but I know for a fact we're not going to be able to do more than five episodes of a time to talk about Kuroko, so I wait. And then we're not able to talk about Kuroko that week, and then I end up having to wait months to watch more Kuroko. It's really funny how it, it ended up this way. But it works out because I think uh, it's a great show. All right, Zen. That's it for Kuroko this week. Hopefully two weeks from now we'll get to talk about it more and talk about more basketball. But for now, let's end the show. As always, if you want to see more Zen, go over to Zen Rot's channel where he does Shonen and Chill where he talks about all the currents going on in Shonen Jump, at least the ones that he reads. Are you going to, now that you're finally starting to read One Piece, are you going to add One Piece? No, I would have to get, I would have to get my co-host to read a thousand chapters of One Piece. Fuck. Okay, you know what? If you ever get, the, here's my promise to use in as an addendum, as like an extra, you can call it uh, <laughs> Shonen and Chill, Extra Chill. I will do a side one where I will talk to you about the current chapter of that, One Piece. I will totally do that. Shonen and Chill chiller chiller and it will just be me and you talking about the one piece chapter only if you get to the if you ever get up to date to it as we head on into the final one i promise you i will gladly (laughs) take the time off and record with you whenever you want uh whenever is available even if i have to wake up in the early day i will gladly do it (laughs) to be able to talk to you about it and record something for it so look forward to that if it ever happens, we'll see. How will you have to? You're back. Are you back in East Blue right now? Uh, I am in. Uh, I'm getting close to 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 Marinford. Uh, they're like in the middle of the battle. Oh, okay, okay. Marine so Forge or whatever. Man. It's yeah. Marine Forge real good. Man, I, I there's also been a part of me that also just wants to reread One Piece. 
just because I'm take it's taking forever for the current one to be going. It's not having to wait a week. Is such is so excruciating. <laughs> It's tough out here reading weekly manga, but thankfully there's a show out there that talks about it and at least that lets you take up some time and hear other people also talk about the current ongoing manga and how they have to wait for more. And yeah, on my channel you can uh, follow me and uh, I do stuff. I occasionally remember to do other videos <laughs> along with Fate stuff and I promise to keep trying to remember that. We're getting into spooky season, which means 13, Halloween, 13 nights of Halloween are starting up. Um, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do with Zen because Zen has been on every single 13 nights. I'm not going to pull, pull, uh, pull away from the tradition. Exactly. You and D free basically are the two that have been there for every single one of them, I think. And then the, the one that followed up after that is Vio and the uh, team ghost fuckers, which is our <laughs> <laughs> crack team. I have a lot of good team names going on. I have the Mew Mew force, <laughs> which is Jay's. Uh, Captain, which he's removed the uh, the Soldier seventy six. He's uh, he's debranded from Overwatch, so he's just Captain Ginyu now. Uh, Jason Raccoon. I have them. I have Ghost Fuckers, and then I have maybe another. I think I have another one. I just can't remember the name of it right now. I have my siblings, which is where we the the only the only time we ever did a group thing together was for Hamtaro, and that's where Are You Ready for Another Fucking Adventure comes from. <laughs> Because episode two, that's of amazing. Yeah, episode two of Hamtaro starts with me going, "Are you guys ready for another fucking adventure?" <laughs> and since then, it's been uh, I've adopted it from there. So if you ever wondered what was the first video where "Are you ready for another adventure?" comes from, it comes from Hamtaro Ham Ham Heartbreak Part Two. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for making it all the way to the end. We'll see you guys next week. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace!